Hey everyone, welcome to another Audacious Devotion. It's so good that you could join us today. Uh, my name's Paul, I'm part of the team at Audacious and if this is the first time you've logged in or first time you've met me, then let me just say well done. It's a great decision. Starting off your day or at least making time in your day at some point to focus on God. Think about what God is saying and how that impacts your life today. That's a great move. If you're a regular, then you probably know me or have seen a devotion or two by me. We've been doing all sorts of different things over the last few months, weeks, years. Um, we've been looking at certain books of the Bible, going through a chapter at a time. We did Psalms, we did Proverbs, we've done all sorts of the epistles, the letters in the New Testament. But right now what we're doing is choosing a meaningful or our favorite bible verse so this for me is really difficult because you know i'm sure this is kind of like what everyone would say but like the whole bible is so awesome um and really difficult to choose one verse or even a couple of verses that are like the best or our favorite or most meaningful so i've just i've just gone for it i've chosen um two peter chapter one verses three to nine and uh, I'll tell you exactly why they are meaningful to me when I've read them. I'm going to start by reading them from the message and then probably refer to different versions as I'm just chatting it through as you start your day off today. Here we go. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 says this, everything that goes into a life of pleasing God has been miraculously given to us by getting to know personally and intimately the one, capital O, one, talking about Jesus. So by getting to know personally and intimately the one who invited us to God, the best invitation we ever received. We were also given absolutely terrific promises to pass on to you. Your tickets to participating in the life of God after you turn your back on the world corrupted by lust. Verse 5 says this, so don't lose a minute in building on what you've been given, complementing your basic faith with good character, spiritual understanding, alert discipline, passionate patience, reverent wonder, warm friendliness and generous love. Each dimension fitting into and developing the others. With these qualities active and growing in your lives, no grass will grow under your feet. No day will pass without its reward. As you mature in your experience of our master Jesus, without these qualities, you can't see what's right before you. Obvious that your old sinful life has been wiped off the books. All right, these are some of my favourite verses, as I said, from the New Testament, because they're powerful, they're profound, they're practical and they're personal. The opening words fill me with faith and hope and confidence because it says everything I need for a godly life. This is a New Living Translation, I think. It says everything I need for a godly life, life has already been given to me. Take a minute, right? to let that settle in your heart and in your mind. I dare you to try and say it out loud. Say it with me. I have everything I need. That's unbelievable. It might sound strange, especially because we're used to sort of saying about all the things that we don't have. But to sort of confess that or declare that, to use a real Bible word, world, word, a Bible word, declare that is really powerful. I dare you to go and say it to someone in the house. I don't know if you live alone or not, but if there's anyone in your house and you're not going to um, annoy them by waking them up, why don't you just go to them now and try and say that to them? Say, I have everything that I need. The next bit is just as good because it goes on to tell me and you exactly how to get it. By it, I mean the everything that you need. It says that it's through knowing Jesus more. In the message that I read to you, uh, the version that I read at the beginning, it says that we uh, need to get to know personally and intimately Jesus. If we, know, if we know that, then we get what we need. To get 
what I need, I must know him more. To get what I need, I must know him more. That's what this verse is saying, or these verses are saying. So the next question, I suppose, well, let's just retrack. I've got everything that I need, first point. Second point, how do I get what I need? Because if you're like me, I kind of believe the Bible that I've got everything I need, but then uh, I seem to have an access problem. Like, how do I get what I need? Because if I have it, great, but sometimes I don't feel like I've got it. So how do I get it? By getting to know Jesus. To get what I need, I must know him more. But then he goes on to say, how do you do that? How do you know him more? Well, the verses that follow tell us what, but I'm going to just kind of do a bit of a Tarantino-esque kind of crazy movie vibe by jumping to the end. Because in verse 8, the last verse that I'm focusing on today, it says that if we apply these verses to our everyday lives, the bit that I've not read yet, the in-betweeny bit, um, then we will be effective and productive in knowing Jesus. Now, we already said that we've got everything we need. We access it by knowing Jesus. Then it says how. Um, and then it says if we do this, which I'll focus on in a sec, then we'll be effective and productive in knowing Jesus, which is how we got what we need. This is awesome. It's like a life philosophy in just a few verses. Um, so what are the bits in between then? I mean, if only it told us exactly how we get to know Jesus. Well, it does. It does just that. Uh, verse 5 says this in the NIV, I think it says, is that we need to add to our faith. That's how we get to know Jesus, by adding to our faith. One version says that we need more than just faith. And so supplement our faith with these things. And it goes on to give us a list. So we've got what we need. We get it by knowing Jesus. And you know Jesus more by adding to your faith these things. There's seven. Number one, goodness. Number two, knowledge. Number three, self-control. One of my favourites. Or least favourites. Let's just say it's a challenge. Number four, perseverance, which I need in order to be able to keep trying to manage self-control or master self-control. Uh, godliness, mutual affection. One version says brotherly kindness. And number seven is love. Now, we could spend a whole week, a whole month worth of devotions just going through that list, looking at each one. Uh, you know, what exactly they are, how we can add them to our faith. In fact, that's probably a challenge for someone watching or listening to this devotion right now. Why don't you choose to study for the next month, every day, that list of seven things. Goodness, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, mutual affection and love. And what they are and how you can add them to your life. See what treasure God's got for you in doing that study. But for today, though... I'm just going to mention one more thing before you get stuck into the rest of your day. And that is quite simply this, is that it is more than a one-off. It's not just a one-off. It goes on to say in verse 8 that if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, in other words, you have to keep adding them. It's not just something you just check off your to-do list and wait for the next step. But you have to recognise that discipleship is a constant process and that we must be continually adding to our faith. And of course, the concluding verses tell us that we will be then kept from being ineffective and unproductive in the one thing that's going to increase our access to everything that we need, which is the knowledge of him. Here's my quote for, for the day. Pat. Part A, I have everything I need. Say it, I have everything I need. Part B, I get it by knowing Jesus. And part C, I know Jesus more by adding to my faith. And there's a whole list of things that you can look at adding. Well, that's my favourite kind of, one of my favourite passages in the Bible, in the New Testament 
And uh, I wanted to share that with you today because I am a disciple of Christ. I want to grow in Christ and you are a disciple. And so you want to grow. And that's what makes a great disciple, someone who's applying the word of God. I would say thanks for listening, but I want to say especially thanks for applying what you're hearing because that what, that's what makes a disciple. And that's what makes a great church full of disciples of Christ growing in him. Listen, guys, have a great day. We love you so much and uh, hopefully see you soon online or even better in person at one of our services in Manchester or Chester or who knows, in Sheffield or Cardiff or somewhere else in the world. We love you so much. God bless you. Have a great day.